Welcome back to RuralVacantLand.com. This is Luke Smith. I've got another property for you. This one is in El Dorado County, California. It's Northern California. It's just up the hill from a little town called Sutter Creek. You might recognize from wine, big wine country. Um, further up the hill is you know, Lake Tahoe, down the hill and over a bit, San Francisco, that part of the country. So let's jump into the computer. I'll show you where we're at. Here's the map on ruralvacantland.com. This is the map search. A bunch of different properties going on there. The red ones are sold. The green ones are for sale. We're zooming in to just, uh, here's San Francisco and these two over here. There's Lake Tahoe's up here. This is the um, Sierra Nevadas. Sutter Creek is just down here. Amador City, Jackson. So we zoom in. There's smaller towns like Volcano, Barton, Pioneer. But I think to get major supplies, you're going to go down to uh, Sutter Creek. A bunch of roads coming in this area. The bigger one in the area is called Fiddletown Road. And so what I wanted to show, I don't know if it's showing up so well on the map here. Maybe if I switch it over to this kind of map. Maybe you can see it on that map. The road comes down, so we've got a paved road over here, Fiddletown Road, and it goes down, it's called Bootstrap, and it does a zigzagger because it's a hill, it's going down the hill and it comes and it crosses South Fork of the Kasums River. I'm probably saying it wrong, looks like a beautiful river, but I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. And then there's a bridge and it crosses, and it goes across the other side and it comes back up and over and around and it goes a couple different ways. So the other side, it comes around and it goes... You know, a bunch of directions, different ways, but it comes down uh, to, you know, it comes out to major roads down here, like Mount Alcum Road, down, down, Fiddletown. So you can hit it from Fiddletown Road over here and come in. Um, that might be a long trek, but you could hit it from Fiddletown Road here and get in there. Um, my point is there's a couple routes, so you, you have to follow these roads and see what the routes are because I don't know the status of the bridge how old it is or if it's used or if it's a footbridge or a driving bridge or what let's go to satellite and so the uh, the people that I bought this property from they said that they would use that bridge in the past but it's been 10 or 20 years or something since they've been there and um, they would go camping here and they'd love to go camping here and go for a dip in the creek and swim in the creek and you're right next to the creek you're right on the river it's south fork of Kas Kasumnis river I'm sure I'm saying that wrong <laughs> but it's there and so it's two properties this river is the border between uh, El Dorado County in the north and Amador County in the south so I've got two pieces of paper one for either side of the river um, the Amador side is like a quarter acre ish I'm not sure if it's big enough to run with that on its own or not. You might be able to build a cabin on the Amador side and sell that off or use it or keep it. You know, have your sibling go there or cousin or family or something. But on the El Dorado side, you get five acres or just shy of five acres. I think originally it's like five acres and it got split by the county. So it might be 4.75 and then 0.25 or something, less the river in between. But what I'm doing is I'm selling them together. So ran them through title together. I figure you can buy them together as a package. And if you sell off one side, um, great um, to help pay for the other side. Maybe you sell off the five acres to help you know and keep the quarter acre. I'm not sure. I've never been there, so that gives you more more levers to pull, things to figure out. So this bridge is supposed to be right in here. Can't see it on this uh, this satellite picture so well. I don't think. Maybe you can. You can see the bridge there. It's under the trees. It's like an old wooden bridge. So you own either side of it, and the bridge is on a neighbor's property. So let's zoom in some more. I'm going to click on the one to the north, the El Dorado one, because I've been working on that ad some more. And um, I should work on the other ad some too to get the maps in there, but they're not updated yet. So I just got the maps and pictures and everything into this one. This is $44,900 I'm asking for this property. Um, had a picture guy go out and get some pictures. Let's see if the pictures are in here yet. I'm not sure they're actually in here yet. Um, this might be it. So these, I think these are site pictures. These might be street view. I'm not sure. 
I think those are street view. But uh, picture guys should get the pictures in there pretty soon. Maybe by the time this video is up, you'll see the pictures in there. Um, there's uh, a new map on the website. I've been working on this the last bit. We got that updated. So now we've got a three or an interactive map. You can pull it up and you can see the lot lines and blinks different colors and stuff. So at the southern end of the lot line is the stream. And then across the stream, there's another lot over here, which is the uh, the Amador County property. And so you get both sides of it. Um, I should have that map pulled up, but I don't. And then the bridge is right next to it. So it looks like you could drive through, drive access on one side, cross the bridge, and drive an access on the other. You could put a cabin on either side. Heck, maybe you could even put a, you know, a cable or a rope bridge or something in between you walk back and forth put the kids on one side of the river with mom and dad on the other side of the river maybe I should pitch my wife on this one <laughs> it could be fun I'd like to build one of those uh, she probably think I'm crazy but I think it'd be fun yeah so I put a link in here to the ad on the other side of the river for the property on the other side of the river I don't think the map is in this one yet it might be, yeah, it's not in there yet. It should be in there soon. Um, there's a bunch of pine trees in the area and uh, GPS coordinates and everything. And this one's just going to be included with the other property, so they come together. And you get directions to stores and Walmarts and shops and things around the area. Let's go back to the original one. So it's El Dorado County is the main piece of property. The smaller piece is in Amador County. Got GPS coordinates here, got a legal description. It kind of looks like this legal description I don't think is totally full. I'm going to try to get that drawn out. That's that's just part of the legal description. It's the area. It's not the actual legal description. Um, water, you, had to, you have to drill your own well. I don't, I don't know what the legality is about taking water out of the river. I wouldn't let anyone see you if you're doing that. Um, sewer you'd have to build a septic system or talk to the county maybe they allow composting or or whatever property tax has been about 81 bucks a year on the el dorado side i think there's a tax on the amador side too it's not very much no time limit to build type of train i put riverside in there i think it's a bit of a hill like going down and then flattish near the river is my understanding and then down to the river so i think there's an area to build but i think the main part of the five acres is the hill and you can see that um, with the way the roads go up and down the hill. You know, they're coming and going, they're waggling around. So if we pull this up, if we hit the GPS and we pull this up in uh, Google Maps, we can do 3D. We can take a look at that hill because there is a hill there. You're coming down a hill to get in and up a hill to get out. So you're in the valley. And this valley goes and hooks up with some other rivers, eventually flow out to the ocean through under the San Francisco Gate, San Francisco Bridge. So you're down in this valley, this river valley. Both sides, road on both sides. The river comes through. You can see how the road comes down. Okay, so we should be able to do street view. So if we go back to the website, let's go back to the map. So we've got, uh, we've got our little street view dude here. Let's see. Maybe not do it just yet. Let's zoom out a little bit more so we see the road. Where's the road turn off? Um, right here, I think. This I think this is the turn off. Okay, so let's see if we can see the turn off here. I think that might be the turn off. Yeah, I think that's the turn off. So. Talk about a secluded driveway. This is my, my favorite kind of driveway. This is a two track, right? You drive on that, one wheel on either side. Maybe it could use some mowing, maybe clip some branches and bushes. Nobody's gonna come bother you on this road. This is gonna be like your own, own private paradise. This goes to someone else's house. Yeah, so I think that's the turn off. Look at these trees in the area. Some nice good sized trees. They're spread out. They're not all right on top of each other. So a lot of light still comes through. It's got a name of something over here. Markley Mine Road. 
Markley Mine Road. So some mine going off that direction. So right across from Markley Mine Road is the entrance to the property. Boy, that looks like fun. If I didn't have to take care of kids every day, I'd go drive up there just to drive down that road. That to me, that's just like, what's at the end of that? My wife's always picking at me, picking on me, because I want to see what's at the end of roads. <laughs> I like to find the end, right? This one looks like the perfect one to go find the end, especially during deer season if you're chasing deer, or turkey season, or heck, just going taking the dog for a walk or taking the kids for a walk, just pointing at the next squirrel and the next lizard or rabbit or whatever is down the trail to keep them going. Maybe I should throw the kids in the car and drive all night while they're sleeping, take a tour of this property. I'd love to build a cabin on something like this. Or this one, right next to the river. Okay, so let's keep going. There's the river, right on the river. Here's the, the ad. So I got directions from the property to Lowe's. I was looking for Home Depot, but there's a Lowe's here 20 miles away. It's probably Home Depot right around the area too. So 42 miles or 25 miles if you go this way, that's the other side of the river, 25 miles. This side of the river, the road looks better, at least around here, it's 20 miles. What we should do is we should look at the turnoff here. wonder what the turnoff here looks like. see if it works oh yeah it looks like a nice one this is Fiddletown Road it's paved I'm gonna lose where I'm at I thought if we came from the north route we could see the roads but I'm getting sidetracked so it's 20 miles to Lowe's. Yeah, this northern route. I wonder how far it's paved. And Fiddletown's probably still paved up here, right? Still paved. Still paved. So the northern route looks paved ways. I thought it was going to be dirt. Bunch of nice roads in this area. Oh, I'm coming on the south side. I thought I was coming in from the north. You guys can figure out the roads to the north. These look dirt. Look like dirt roads. I bet you they'd be a lot more fun to drive though. Fun as in exciting, not fun as in faster probably be slower but more exciting you see all kinds of nature more magical entrance to the property coming in from the north so here's some lot lines let me get it out from behind my head here's some lot lines in the area it looks like somebody had a what 40 acres no yeah maybe 40 acres maybe they had a 40 acre and they split it up 10 ways made some smaller ones and some bigger ones so here it is they split this thing up and the roads coming through around this little sliver down here is in Amador County and this chunk is in um, El Dorado County you might be able to work that into its own property I don't know and then uh, let's take a look at the next one so I was researching this river because I, I like fishing, right? I always like to see what lives there, what's there, what can you catch. And I found this uh, California website about a um, bunch of uh, species of fish in different areas. And they're testing these because they're hating on dams and the dams that don't have fish ladders keep a lot of different kinds of fish out of these river sheds. And uh, so they're, these watersheds are trying to get the dams to either incorporate fish ladders or get rid of the dams. So I think that's the basis behind these studies. But they did these studies to see what's growing in these rivers, right? And so they're saying, you know, you don't have brown trout, but you've got um, Central Valley Spring Chinook Salmon and Central Valley Steelhead. 
And then some other fish I don't care about, like lamprey and stuff. Those are evil buggers. They kill the fish. I don't really want those, but they got those in the river. Don't look those up. Those are ugly. <laughs> we had those in the Great Lakes. So they're uh, Central Valley Spring Chinook Salmon. So I looked those up, and here's some pictures that the state's putting together. These are nice looking salmon. I'm sure if we looked up fishing pictures of these kinds, um, this is uh, maybe not in the same river, but it's the same kind of fish that, that's in the river. Here's the baby ones, here's the good sized ones. These are the schnooks, you know, the ones with like the gnarly colors and the head that gets all like garled as they as they start spawning, their jaw goes J -sh hook shaped looking. They're sweet looking fish just because of the colors on them. They don't taste that great after they get spawning really deep into their spawning run, but they sure look awesome. Um, they taste better when they're earlier on in the season. And then the um, Central Valley Steelhead. Check these guys out. Man, you don't even need a grill. Those things look ready to eat. You just slice them off and you got some sashimi. I mean, that just, that guy looks like I want him for dinner. There's one running through the stream. So there's some people catching them. This one looks like it's been spawning for a while. This looks like an older fish. Probably had to snag it. It's probably hard to even get them to, this is in Alaska. Probably hard to even get them to bite when they get that old. Um, look at the color on that little guy. It's a pretty one. Nice colors. Beautiful fish. That's ah, cool. Okay. So I looked up the river on Instagram. Because I was hoping I'd get like some view of what this river looks like. What size is it and everything. And um, so I think a lot of these pictures are downstream more. And, and our property is upstream more. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of pictures up in there that I could find. But these are some people... Um, you know, crossing the river on his bike and people hiking it, touring in there, looking in the canyons. So parts of this river get some serious rock and canyons. I don't think our property has anything like that. But, uh, boy, it would be neat if it did. It'd be fun to put a gondola across a stream or something there. Uh, these guys are putting cables across and doing all kinds of circus acts. This lady caught, what did she catch? That looks like a serious fish in this same river. This is the river that goes by the property. So this is the river. This is a Kasumis, Kasumis River. The part of the river we're on might be upstream and smaller. Like it might be gathered up more water down here where she's at. I'm not exactly sure. It might be about this size. It might be smaller. I'm guessing smaller. Oh boy, what did she catch? Steelhead. So that's one of the, that's one of the steelhead. It's one of the Central Valley steelhead she got. It's a serious fish. Catch one of those a year, it'd make it worth it right there. Some artsy pictures, people taking dips, lots of people taking dips in this river. As you're getting further down, they're kayaking and it, the river gets bigger as it goes downstream. But I think as you get upstream, it might be more, more um, rustic like this. This is gonna be really rocky, but I mean, you know, you know nice trees going down to the river. Um, This looks like fun. It might look like this too. So this is this is the river. I mean, this is this is a part of that same river that goes by the property. These people are swimming, digging, having fun, exploring. My kids would have so much fun digging the river, catching crayfish and frogs and minnows and whatever they could find. There's somebody fly fishing a part of it. Sierra Nevadas. Kasun's River. It's a video. There's some water flowing. He's looking for a hole to throw his fly into. I wouldn't be surprised if it looks kind of like this. This is kind of what I'm thinking of the size of the river it probably is up there. You can see the kid swimming down here if it's not behind my head. Yeah. A couple, five, six body lengths wide. And this is the same river. Here's a green hole in the river. This is a lot more trees surrounding it. It's the same river, different parts of the same river. People jumping off trees. Look at this swimming hole. These people are swimming in the stream. So this looks like the water is really clear, at least for parts of this river. I'm guessing the whole way up. If it's like this further down, it's probably clean further up too. You know, all these pictures, really clean water. So this is for all I know, that might even be the bridge right next to the property. 
but uh, something like this this is the same river it's a different parts of the river I'm not exactly sure if it's right by the property or not it's just got to get in there now this is what it's all about look at that dog that's a happy dog he's swimming in the river <laughs> nice summer day dog will probably jump in there in the middle of winter too probably just won't stay in as long um, that's what it's about you could live on the river you could hear the water going by it's life you know the deer come down and birds and just raccoons all kinds of stuff they live around water so when you're by a stream like this you get a lot more life more stuff to watch if I was going to go build on a property like this, I'd bust out the A-frame because I think it's half the time and half the money to build one of these things. And some people think they're ugly. They were a fad in the 60s and that was fun and now they're gone, but I, I'd like to resurrect it. It's been a long time since people really got serious about building A-frames. They used to pick on them because of the lack of insulation, but now you've got SIPs and you've got like different kinds of insulation you could use. You could have a wood wooden wall like this on the inside you know board and batten whatever you call it tongue and groove then you could have styrofoam kind of you have 12 inches of this stuff you know like a sip panel osb sandwiched into insulation and then osb on the outside and put your shingles on the outside of that you're going to be so crazy insulated if you use modern technologies you know let's look at this one it's got a fascia board on it I mean, this one doesn't look like it's got much of any insulation in the roof. It just looks like boards going to, to roofing. But if you added insulation in there, you get rid of the whole problem of why people stopped making them in the past. Or the massive piece of the problem. And you could throw these things together quick. Get your cabin up and going. Start living there fast. And you build one of these A's and you use a winch. Click, click, click. Stand it into place. Put some scab boards on there so the next one plops right into place. You just ding 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 that one's only four four of them I mean make a bigger one than that but you know what I'm talking about the artsies are fun you could build whatever you want I'm just throwing an idea out there because I like looking at these now I'm gonna take you back to this property we got and uh, I'm gonna tell you that down at the bottom there's a description and in that description box of this video there's a link, it'll take you to my website, you can play with the maps, you can look at the property, there's GPS coordinates on there, you click on that in your phone, it'll give you driving directions to the property, you click on it in the computer, it'll give you a map you can play with, and you can see the lot lines, and you can see where it's at, and go tour it and see if it's the right one for you. I'm asking $44,900, you get both lots, one on either side of the river, uh, it's about five acres total, and um, maybe five and a quarter, I'm not exactly sure. And you know, you buy it, the checkout's like a $500 checkout, click, 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 and you reserve it, and then you can wire the rest of the money, you can send a cashier's check, regular check, cash, um, we could take it to a title shop, if you want to run it through a title shop, I can transfer the insurance that I got on this thing over to you, uh, you have to pay the title company, maybe whatever the title company is that they charge, maybe two grand or something, um, maybe we could use a different title company maybe it won't be as much I don't know you can pick your own title company or you can use mine if we use mine we'll transfer the title insurance over so I'll be happy to help you with all the paperwork make it happen and um, you just got to go see if that's the right property for you thanks for listening thanks for watching this is Luke Smith at ruralvacantland.com and I'm I'm proud that you're still watching this this video thank you talk to you later bye